Greetings, everyone. Welcome to New Bedford, Massachusetts. My name is Eric Durant, and I'm going to be showing you around my studio a little bit and talking a bit about my process. Uh, so all of my works are, uh, are figurative uh, and usually end up as bronze castings. Uh, you can see from these small sketches down here that they all start out as small gesture sketches in clay. These are all done from live models. Uh, from that, we then build them up into larger third scale or half scale versions. Right, this one, which is almost finished uh, and will be heading to mold fairly soon and be cast in bronze. Uh, and then over here, you can see the two pieces that will be in the show uh, Heaven and Hell. So the first one over here is, uh, this is Two Skulls. Uh, and Two Skulls is uh, a piece that is about dichotomy. Uh, the dichotomy is the dichotomy between man and nature. And you can tell by the state of the skulls uh, how I feel about the inevitability of that struggle. Uh, over here, uh, we have Prometheus. Uh, Prometheus uh, was, of course, famously punished for uh, giving man fire. Uh, and this is very relative to how I feel about uh, trying to, as an individual, trying to do the right thing um, and then having the larger forces that be um, punish you for that. Uh, so that is a character that I relate to in, in many ways. Uh, so hopefully uh, you will get a chance to get out to the show uh, and check them out. Uh, if you're interested in more of my work, you can find us on all the social networks. Uh, and uh, I hope to see you there. Hello, my name is Tanya Toole, and I'm very pleased to give you a little information about myself and my work. Um, and I'm also very thankful to be included in the Heaven and Hell show. It sounds like a very interesting concept. Um, my work is very inspired by my studies in Italy, especially in Central Italy. Um, I'm very lucky to be able to go there uh, every summer. Uh, for two or three months, not this summer of course, but um, I go there and I study the Etruscan tomb paintings, um, which sounds very morbid, but um, it isn't. Um, these are very, very old images, like 2,500, uh, 3,000 year old images that are still vibrant and beautiful. Um, it was a very sophisticated civilization. It was a the civilization that came before ancient Rome, and in fact, the uh, Etruscans uh, built Rome. Um, and so anyway, I studied them. Um, I study many archeological sites there and old churches, some of which are very obscure uh, churches that have beautiful imagery. Um, I also lived in Arizona for many years and studied uh, petroglyphs and wall paintings there, and also uh, worked with uh, Navajo and uh, studied their spiritual practices and was very awed and inspired by them. Uh, so my work's a bit of an amalgam of these things, I hope an interesting amalgam. Um, and I'm very interested in the whole idea of heaven and hell as a almost a psychological concept um, that um, reflects the peoples, the times, um, and the spiritual practices of people over hundreds and hundreds of years. So it is a very rich concept, and so I'm very thankful to be included in this show. Thank you.
My name is James Deeb, and I'm one of the artists exhibiting in the Heaven and Hell show. By way of biography, I was born in Berlin in 1964 in what was then partitioned Germany. My father died unexpectedly a few years later, and my family moved back to the States, where I grew up in a small town in Indiana. I went to undergraduate school at Indiana University in South Bend, and went to, did my graduate work at Western Michigan University in Kalamazoo. My work is characterized by uh, its melancholy and darkness and its dark humor. Um, I've been working professionally for over 35 years, and I primarily make paintings, monotypes, and drawings, plus the occasional short film. The two pieces I have in this show are from a series called Killing Eternity, which showed devils doing devilish, but also very human things. The first piece actually is the title piece for the series, Killing Eternity, and it's a primarily f about the boredom of war. Um, war is often described as being uh, long periods of sheer boredom mixed with short periods of sheer terror. And I wanted to uh, make a piece that captures the idea of, an eternal, of the eternal boredom of, a, of an eternal war. The second piece is called The Devil and the Details, and it imagines the devil's, how the devil thinks of his place in the universe, with him at the center, surrounded by hell, and then the earth, and then the plants, the sky, um, and then the heavens which lie at his feet. Hopefully that gives you some insight into my work and my process. Um, I hope this show gives you something to think about, and thank you for coming.
I'm Emily Grace Weber and I'm a senior fine arts student at Pompon University here in St. Louis, Missouri. I'm a 2D mixed media artist and although I've recently been focusing mostly on producing oil paintings, my piece in the show is a charcoal drawing. It is called Almost Somebody and it is a visual representation of how I was feeling earlier this year when it was created. In my work, I often use layered compositions inspired by printmaking. I'd show that in this piece through my use of the gold metallic paper as well as my play on foreground versus background. I decided to make this piece when I made the decision that I needed to be more proactive in my mental health and combating my depression. It's meant to show the feelings I had of comfort in my depressive state as well as the feelings of emptiness and loneliness and how they can often become easier to deal with than the unknown that comes with progress and recovery. In my work, I often try to explore aspects of life that make us uncomfortable and uncertain. Things like depression, death, loss, and impermanence. By doing so, I kind of hope to be able to comprehend and get a grasp on these concepts that seem beyond understanding and beyond acceptance. This is the first show I've been accepted to. It's also the first show that I've uh, applied to. So that's kind of on me, but regardless, I am so thankful and I am so grateful and I hope you enjoy the show and I hope you enjoy my piece. Bye. Hello, my name is Peter Bucks. Welcome to my art studio here in the Humboldt Park neighborhood of Chicago. Um, I was born and raised here in the city of Chicago and I went to Gordon Tech High School and I also went to Ray College of Design where I met my instructor Bruno Cerdo who is a atelier trained master having lineage that goes back to Jacques-Louis David. I was very fortunate for this. After college, I freelanced quite a bit, worked for some companies in the area, and then eventually went off on my own to take private commissions um, in portraiture. Um, I also do a lot of murals, public art, and uh, some illustration. I was trained in illustration and in fine art um, in the traditional methods of uh, academic drawing and painting. I love this type of art and that's why I do it and I'm always trying to perfect it. I always feel like I'm still a student actually. Um, I have always admired uh, realistic types of paintings. Um, so I work in realism and representational art and sometimes that may fall a little bit into impressionism but for the most part it is representational. Uh, I work from life, and um, uh, if that is inconvenient for a model uh, to sit quite a while, I'll take my own photographs and then work from my own photographs as references. Um, I'll piece together my own compositions and then um, start preliminary drawings. Sometimes I do charcoal studies prior to the painting. Um, when I do the painting, it is on aluminum panel, and I prime these panels with an oil-based primer. Um, and from there, I'll work an underpainting, which is kind of a tonal study, and then an overpainting in full color. Um, I am a, an associate member of Oil Painters of America, NOPES, Allied Artists of America, and I'm also a member of the palette and chisel here in Chicago. Uh, about the painting for the show that you're seeing, 
heaven and hell. Um, the name of the painting is Morality, and it's about the decisions that one must make, um, being right or wrong, and the consequences that this may cause. Making the wrong decision could put you in hell, and making the right decision could put you in heaven. Ironically, the model for this, because I couldn't find a model, is myself. So it is also a self-portrait, which makes things interesting for people that know me. Um, <laughs> it's, been, it's been kind of funny. Um, however, it is uh, quite an interesting composition. Uh, it definitely depicts decision-making of good or evil, and where that may lead you. It's either heaven or hell. The clock is ticking, as you can see on the wristwatch. I hope you enjoy the painting and the show, Heaven and Hell. Thank you for visiting. That's a little bit about me. Um, I hope to see you again. Um, enjoy the show. Peace. Terry Luck, welcome to my art studio Tiki Bar. Today I want to show you this piece. It's a, actually a four canvas piece, four separate canvases. It's called the Watchers. Now the Watchers are to me just a fascinating concept. They're mentioned just once or twice in the Bible, just every now and then, and then a lot in the book of Enoch outside of the Bible. And the idea of the Watchers is they came down from heaven to watch how mankind is doing. But, but here's where it gets scary. There are good watchers and bad watchers called the fallen angels who influenced mankind in a very negative way. Again, my understanding then is after a battle with the archangels, they were defeated and trapped under the earth. And it just makes you wonder, with everything happening today, did somebody let them out? Are they walking among us? Are they influencing what's going on today? It does make you wonder. Next time you see a stranger looking at you, is it a stranger or is it a watcher? Think about it. On the bright side, always remember, put a little art in your life. You'll feel better. Hi, I'm Jim Berlinkel. I'm a professor of art and theater at St. Louis University in St. Louis, Missouri. I teach sculpture and 3D design, and I practice as a sculptor and as an architectural and theatrical designer. Uh, 
The piece in Heaven and Hell that I've done is called Red Blue. It's uh, the latest in a series of very similar pieces that are looking at the idea of what it means to be present. Um, the objects themselves are black rectangular figures, rectilinear volumes, uh, made out of serialized uh, planes of steel. I, I plan and cut out the idea of an object that's been removed from that volume, uh, manipulate the edges, apply color, and then pass light up through it. And as the light passes through the interior of the object and reflects off the, the edges, uh, it, it, the light reflects off of it, bounces around, and we get the experience of that thing that has been removed. They have uh, a, a kind of an ethereal presence that I find very appealing. Um, and it's part and parcel of, of the things that I do as an artist and as a designer. Uh, primary to my practice uh, in whatever I do is that idea that emotional content can be manipulated by the way in which we light uh, either a place or a figure. Um, so finding ways in which we can uh, change the experience of an object for the people that view it is, is really at the heart and soul of, of what I do. Um, new meaning, new emotional content, um, how I make you feel when you experience the object is at the core of the practice. from DC. I recently moved to Silver Spring, Maryland about, about two to three years ago with my wife and son. Um, I do a lot of 2D visual work, um, particularly with charcoal. It's my favorite medium. Um, I just enjoy just the sort of texture. I think you can get um, a certain sort of gradient that is harder to get with other mediums. Um, I'm also very or at least as my wife tells me, a very patient person, and I think it's one of those mediums that lends itself well to it. Um, I enjoy uh, drawing subjects that overlap with my love of history and mythology. I think the two sort of give a lot of stories of human archetypes, and you can learn about a lot about um, just a general human behavior. I find that people in similar situations tend to do similar things regardless of race, ethnicity, or creed. And I think that there's a lot of common ground to find in those stories. Um, and I think if we could sort of come together sort of in the sort of sense that humans both have the capacity to do things that border on the angelic as well as the demonic I think that there's a lot of common ground to find with that um, I entered three pieces into the show uh, the first is Janice Janice is actually a my interpretation of the Roman god Janice who's actually um, typically depicted with two uh, heads opposing in opposite directions and um, it's where you get the term Janice face from which means to have uh, sharply contrasting characteristics um, it also kind of bleeds into popular culture um, because Janus is, there's been speculation that Janus is what the month of January has been named after. Um, and just as you have sort of, you know, the face looking towards the past and the face looking towards the, um, 
the future. That's kind of where that sort of Janice theme kind of um, you know relates to as well. Um, but I didn't want to do the typical depiction of Janice, so I, I did something where I actually applied the sharply contrasting um, characteristics literally. So I tried to create something that was still aesthetically appealing, but at the same time um, had sort of gross characteristics. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if I really achieved it. Uh, I, I think it's a, it's a nice looking piece, but I, I wanted to push the limits of what um, people would consider something that's both beautiful and also a little bit funky. Um, the next piece I entered was uh, My God Has Horns 2. It's a depiction of the uh, fawn god uh, Ivyaso. Um, I, I found that the, the more I studied uh, religion, um, particularly mythology, I found that there was a change in how people viewed the sort of bestial qualities of, of animals. Um, basically, you know, the further back you go, you find gods and goddesses that are associated with horns or beasts, and these are sort of admirable qualities in the sense that they show these deities as great progenitors. It's a sort of creative power to have these animal qualities. But as you sort of push forward to more modern religions, there's sort of this separation from nature. And with that separation, you find, you find that um, those sort of animal qualities become more demonic. They're, they're more savage. They're, they're not seen as things that you want to associate with your gods. Um, so I found that interesting. And I wanted to particularly take a god from a really old religion like Vodun, uh, Vodun which is... Um, a religion that's native to Benin, and I wanted to show sort of you know, the, you know that that sort of change from you know how we used to see things that related us to the rest of the world as something, or related us to to nature as something that was something that we wanted to to emulate. Um, he also has a globe that's sitting at the, at the center of his chest with a triangle. Um, that's the triangular trade route. Uh, these uh, these sort of beliefs in Ivyaso, amongst other uh, Vodun gods, um, traveled to the New World via the transatlantic slave route, and you find them in a lot of modern African American religions like Voodoo and such. Um, and the last piece I entered was Moonlight, um, and that was what I wanted to do was show two things in, in, in a sort of perfect balance, um, sort of like the yin and the yang. So that's really what the woman's face and the dog's face are doing. They're, they're opposing each other, but also bouncing out. Um, and she's just sort of a rough depiction of a moon god, um, or moon goddess in this case, um, the Babylonian moon god Sin, um, which is where the word comes from. and. What I found interesting about that is, right, obviously when the god was first given the name Sin, it didn't mean that it was a bad thing, but through history, religion, politics, and the changing of one sort of um, ruling regime to another became synonymous with all that's bad in the world. So it made me think of sort of the consistency of Sin and how it's constantly changing and evolving in the sense that uh, what used to be wrong in a previous era may not be wrong in a future era. Um, case in point, like ancient Greeks and pederasty, right? Um, clearly wrong <laughs> in our current era by all means, but in that society it was seen as a form of tutelage. Um, it's sort of an extreme example, but it just shows how we evolve as people and our definitions of things are constantly changing, even what we um, you know, choose to see as bad or to see as good. Um, running a little long, so I apologize for that. Um, and my process is pretty simple. I'm, I'm a bit of a control freak. Uh, that might be sort of my obsession with mythology, the idea of sort of creating a perfect world or controlling the elements within it. Um, my process is I, I draft my stuff in Photoshop. I create mock-ups in Photoshop. 
and once I'm satisfied with that sort of layout, then I draw and I commit it to to, um, to canvas. Um, and I use it. Yeah, I won't. I won't because charcoal is such a long medium. It takes so long to work with that it's just not, in my opinion, it's just not worth it to to start unless I know where I'm kind of going to finish. Um, but yeah, that's that's my bio and. I hope you enjoy my work. Thank you. My name is Donna Arnold and I'm a conceptual fine art photographer, artist from Romeoville, Illinois. Photography has been a passion of mine for many years. It's a layer of creativity that is only revealed through my art. The inspiration for my work comes from a deep passion for the unknown. My work is an expression of how I feel at any given moment. I believe when you incorporate your mood into your art, that is what makes it your own unique style. The work I create corresponds to a specific story I'm attempting to tell. It has an artistic style that is mysterious, fairy tale like or dark and brooding. I'm known for using moody tones to create a dramatic atmosphere. My goal is to pull the viewer into my fantasy so they could be part of my creation with the intention of triggering an emotional response. The piece I have in the Heaven and Hell exhibit is called Unpleasant Soul. It's about facing our deepest, darkest fears. My vision to create and the love for beauty and darkness invite fear into life so it can be explored and embraced. As an artist, my desire is to connect with my audience and confronting what scares you is how you find art that is meaningful. We all have fears that drown us in our daily lives, but very few will face them. Unpleasant soul symbolizes that we are all just skeletons underneath. My process involves photo manipulation to improve storytelling and self-expression. It requires an active imagination and is a signature expression of my work. Editing has always played a fundamental role in the final result of my art. When I create my work, I believe fantasy and reality can merge to form magical imagery. My work allows me to explore the imagined, be dreamlike and mystical. We are only limited by our imagination and mine is endless. <laughs>